Become a part of one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering communities today, Heroes and Legends. Check out the description below to see two ways to support the channel. The first is Patreon, where you can get an exclusive Heroes and Legends Classic Art token. See our Patreon page for full details. Or you can explore our Amazon Affiliate Store, which collects and organizes some of the best MTG deals on Amazon. If you make any purchases from any Amazon sellers through these links, a small percentage will come back to support the channel. Thank you to everyone that makes this channel and its content possible. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and we're doing something a little different today. I have a budget affinity modern deck list that you see up here on the screen. I wanted to show this to y'all, and then I'm going to take this deck list into MTGO and see if I can squeak out a win against hopefully a tournament quality deck. We'll kind of see how it goes. So the reason, of course, this is budget affinity is it's missing some of the really expensive cards. As a matter of fact, I had some of these in my collection, but I was able to pick up the rest of the cards I needed, which actually was most of them, for somewhere around $15 or so. So I think you could really put this deck together probably between $15 and $30, like the price of like a sealed tournament or something like that, which is pretty impressive. Now, of course, you don't have the Mox Opals and you don't have Arcbound Ravenger. What this deck tries to do is instead of using those expensive variants, things like Glimmer Void and stuff like that, for example, it brings in Tempered Steel, which tries to make this deck into more of a beatdown deck. Now, it's not going to be as consistent as your true full-on affinity by any means, but that is the way that it can sometimes steal a win and get in there. The other place you'll save money with this particular version, of course, is the sideboard. You're not going to see a lot of the expensive sideboard cards in here, like Chalice of the Void, for example. You're going to see a control package, which is very affordable. Dispel, Negate, Oblivion Ring, those type of things. So overall, I think you can kind of surprise somebody and maybe get a victory in once in a while with this deck and at least be able to hang with some decent decks and be competitive. So let's jump into some gameplay and see if we can make it happen. All right, so here is our first game and we are on the play. So let's see what we got here. Uh, yes, we will play first. Um, well, this isn't a great hand. Even though we can put a lot of things down relatively quick, don't feel real comfortable just having the one island. Uh, so I think we're going to have to mulligan this. Um, this isn't a great hand, but I think it's a keep. I mean, we have three mana sources. One card we can put out right away. Yeah, everything's affordable. I mean, obviously you kind of want the blue mana source to be able to play the insult artifact, but we will deal with it. Um, I think I'm going to put this on the bottom to try to get to a blue mana source, although that wouldn't be a horrible card to keep on top, I don't think, because at least we can cast it. Because my fear is what will happen is we put that on the bottom, we hit a bunch of lands, or more artifact lands, or something like that. That wouldn't be great. So we'll get things started here, and then we'll see what our opponent's playing. I mean, really, for this deck to win, I think we have to jump out to a real fast start. I don't know if this deck can hang with a lot of decks if we start getting into like turn five, turn six, turn seven without some substantial board state. <laughs> it just kind of depends on what we run into in the field, I guess. Hmm. All right, Birds of Paradise. Good start by our opponent. All right, that can eventually get us to where we want to be with our blue mana, so that's something at least. I will take it. I'm just going to attack in, get a free point of damage. That's the other thing. A lot of these decks are relying on fetch lands and shock lands, and if our opponent can damage themselves a little bit, we'll take all the help we can get with this deck. <laughs> Again, a budget deck, I and mean, it's going to put you at a disadvantage. But like I said, a good budget deck can squeak out some wins, and I think this one might be able to do it. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Not off to a huge start right now, though. I don't know what our opponent's playing. Oh, this is interesting. Kari, Kari Zev's expertise. Okay. I think I know where this is going. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're trying to use expertise into these fuse cards from Dragon's Maze. And that can be quite good. As you can see on turn two, they just went ahead and untapped their mana birds and got themselves four 1-1 one -one flyers. They didn't have anything to steal really worth it for us, I guess. I guess they'd rather have the mana up as opposed to just attacking in with our 1-1 or something. But 
That's fine. Yeah, that does work. So I guess that's kind of the combo that we're going to see here. These decks will typically try to sneak in Emrakul. Hopefully we won't see that. <laughs> but that's kind of what they're trying to do. Uh, this deck feels like it could get there because when it draws well, it can be real explosive. I mean, you're still looking at possibly turn three, turn four wins with a deck like this sometimes, I think. Uh, but it has to have everything just go its correct way. I'm just going for it here. The problem with this play is our opponent has chump blockers for days. And that's going to hurt us because it's going to give them at least four turns to set up what they're trying to do. And that's probably well too many turns, quite honestly. <laughs> So I think we're at a real big disadvantage here unless we can pull something big. I mean, what this deck doesn't have really is like a big board sweep or something. I mean, Wrath of God might not be a bad idea to have as a sideboard card. We have enough white mana in here that I think it's certainly something that's feasible. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> so another expertise. They took our 5-5 five five this time around, so we're in for a beating. Yeah, and this is what I was afraid of right here. So they're going to mill themselves or eight cards and then take a creature from the graveyard and put it right into play and it gets haste on top of it <laughs> so that's just a beating and of course they did find find uh, emrakul so that will be game um i'll play this out a little bit though just in case they want to show us a little more of their deck i'm not real familiar with what these deck lists look like other than some of the key cards Yep, you got it. Welcome to modern. <laughs> so that was a turn three Emrakul there, right? Or turn four. Are we on turn four now? No, I think it was turn three. Yeah, that was their turn three. This is our turn four. All right, not much we can do. I'm just going to play this, and I assume they're just going to attack in. But uh, every once in a while, I come across an opponent that has a fancy deck that they want to show off a little bit, and they'll do something else. But <laughs> that's not the case. Our opponent's being smart, and they're just finishing the game. So they got it. We'll just let the damage go through. Okay, so we can sideboard some disruption. I think that's what we're going to have to do here. That was a beating. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have in our sideboard. Well, the negates, I don't even think the oblivion ring is going to help us, at least from what we've seen so far. I mean, stopping the expertise cards are going to be what we need to do, I think, and that's going to be negate for us. So I think he's just bringing in all these negates, quite honestly. I, I'm not even concerned about, I don't even think Relic can, is good enough. It's not bad, uh, but I'll just bring in, yeah, I don't even think Oblivion Ring helps us. I'll bring in a couple of Dispels maybe, and these negates. And now I'm just going to try to trim the fat a little bit, some of the slower cards, because this is not going to be a slow matchup. This is a very quick combo when things go its way. So anything that's a little bit slower, like some of these uh, plus two, plus two enchantments, I'm going to drop those. Temper Steel's good, and it's a way to sneak in a victory if you can get it online, but uh, it's just a little slow for this matchup. And I'm also going to take these guys out too, because they take a little too much board presence to get going. So we'll go ahead and try to go lean, and hopefully kind of win based off Soul Artifact and the Cranial Platings. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. Uh, this is a pretty good hand. We have a negate. We just don't have blue mana, so I just hope we draw into it. But in Soul Artifact and a negate, I feel pretty good with this hand. We just really need blue mana. <laughs> and our opponent's not concerned about what we're doing. So as long as we can prevent their combo from going off, I mean, we do have some extra time maybe time enough to draw into that blue mana, maybe draw into another negate if we're lucky, or something like that. And this came starting off much like the last game. Some mana birds. All right. We got a blue mana. That was huge. 
Now the thing is, I just want to keep Negate up here, and as much as I'd like to get an soul Artifact on something, anything, indestructible land, what have you, I'm not going to not hold up Negate, because basically they can drop a land with their birds, they could play an Expertise and put Emrakul out next turn, possibly. So I'm not going to tap out ever <laughs> against this deck. So it doesn't look like they have their combo yet. They're searching for it, so that's good for us. Gives us more time, but they are searching for it, and they're probably going to find it sooner than later. wonder if they needed a land, too. They had to search up that land, which means they have a lot of heat in their hand then. All right, so another land. That's not bad for us, because we do want to get out ahead of things so that we can keep our counter magic up and still do something. So the Blink Moth is not bad. Notice you'll find Blink Moths in this deck, but not Ink Moths. Blink Moths are very affordable on Magic Online. Ink Moths, not as much. <laughs> so, this is a great deck, though, to start off with if you want to eventually upgrade into Affinity. It just might take you a little time to get the resources, but it's not that bad. It's just, those Mox Opals are just disgusting. <laughs> Alright, so they did nothing again. That's good. Now, I'm not going to play the Install Artifact yet because I would have to tap two mana to do it. I could put it on the Citadel. That's really where I want to put it. But I wouldn't be able to attack with the Citadel then. So I don't want to just put it out there to be destroyed or something like that if I'm not going to attack with it right away and get value out of it. And I don't want to not keep Negate up either. So our opponent may be slow playing because they see our blue mana is untapped. And they got to be a little bit suspicious when an Affinity deck is not doing anything. <laughs> so, especially if they think this is a real Affinity deck. Um, so there we go. I'm going to put this on Darksteel Citadel. We're going to just pound in here. And I think, well, they took it. I mean, they could have blocked it with one of their mana sources, but apparently they don't want to lose their mana sources. Okay, they're digging again. Okay, now they do have some options to chump block here. I want to keep a couple creatures back as well. I mean, I could just try to uh, get super aggro. But just in case something goes wrong and they're able to sneak something out or sneak something small out, which is not something I want to negate because I'm worried about negating the combo. I don't want to necessarily get blown out for no reason. So I'm going to hold back a few blockers. Really, I feel like the Citadel is our win condition at this point. I don't want to just overextend this. And it could be a little more aggressive maybe, but I just don't know if it's worth it, worth the risk. And there we go. That's why we kept that negate up. <laughs> SRAM's expertise, that could have led to something really bad. Not to mention just get some chump blockers, which would have extended the game, if nothing else. We'll negate that. All right, looks like our opponent conceded. As a matter of fact, I think they conceded the whole match. All right, I guess we'll find another opponent. All right, so we found another opponent, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be on the draw. And this is a keep, I think. This actually looks like a pretty good hand to me. So we'll get started here. Yeah, I'm not sure if our opponent just ran out of time, had to go, or maybe sometimes you could easily accidentally concede the match instead of the game. I think they're right next to each other on the list. That could have been. Or else they really don't like playing against a control card like the gate. I don't know. One of the three, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, we'll just start off here with a 1-1. One, one. They're going to use their fetch land. Okay. So we'll see how we do here. I think... I mean, we split that last one one and one. I feel like we could have squeaked out of game three there, especially with the control package in our sideboard. Uh, so we'll just see how we do here. Looks like we're up against Mardu. Maybe Nahiri, perhaps. I guess I'll just play the planes. And we're going to need one more source of white matter for the tempered steel, but 
at least if we draw it next turn. If it's then an option, if we want to use it, we don't have to wait another turn to put out the first planes anyway. So that works. All right, lightning bolts. Yeah, it's got to be like Mardu control. If they have a lot of pinpoint removal, that could really slow us down, considering a lot of what we do is try to put little creatures out to get affinity costs down and to get things bigger with the likes of cranial plating, right? So kind of is what it is, I guess. So the first time I played the deck, I'm sure I'll probably make a mistake if I haven't already. <laughs> but um, so far, it's fun. definitely find myself playing more careful than I normally would, I think, because I know these matchups are probably not favorable for us. But, uh, yeah, I did match up, so yeah, there we go. Nahiri. So they're going to use it to get rid of our Citadel. I mean, that's fine, I guess. Worst things that could happen. But we really got to get her off the board. We're not really prepared to do that. Maybe post sideboard we're going to be a little better off, but <laughs> dealing with planeswalkers isn't a strength right now, I don't think. I'm just going to go and attack her, try to get her off the board right now. Which shouldn't be a problem. Our opponent's tapped out. Opponent's got a nice deck, though. Foil Nahiri, some Foil Full Art lands. <laughs> They're not messing around. They probably play quite a bit of Modern. And these matchups are coming from the tournament practice. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, so the only thing they can get rid of is the Tempered Steel, which is okay. Right now we're in a not horrible spot. <laughs> as long as we can get, if we could get another artifact on the table, <laughs> we would be in a great spot. And then keep it there. That's going to be the hard part against this type of deck. <laughs> okay, Path to Exile, fine. Yeah. So now we're in trouble because our opponent's got a few cards in hand. We don't have a whole lot. I mean, we can draw some cards. Hopefully we can draw into something good here. Um, yeah, there's worse things. At least we have two flyers that are free. And they'd have to get rid of both of them, or our plating. But with plating, we can actually get across some damage now. Our opponent's still at 17, though. <laughs> so, kind of is what it is there. Let's see what they're going to play. Oh, okay, they're going to attack in with their lifelinker. So we'll just take it. But that's a nice point swing, considering that's going to put them over 20 now. Or a 19. It's a 2. That's right. It's a 2 power. And we happen to draw a Tempered Steel. That's actually a real good draw. <laughs> so, okay, we'll take that because now we got some 2 4 flyers. And I can toss Cranial Plating on one of them as well. And that's actually a fair amount of damage right there. Next turn, I should, even if I draw into another land or something, I can play our last artifact creature and. That will also bolster the plating a little bit. We just need to kind of survive now. <laughs> oh boy, all right. Well, I expect to lose. Oh, they're getting rid of the Tempered Steel. Okay, like, I get it. That's probably the best play, because if they get rid of the Ornithopter, we just put it on the other Ornithopter. It doesn't matter all that much. I mean, they save themselves a couple points of damage, where that will save them four points of damage minimally this turn, right? So, 
Yeah, it's a good play. We get another one of these, okay. I'll just play out this creature too, and we'll kind of take it from there. Again, I can get across, well, we got to get rid of Nihiri, so let's just do that. <laughs> because she can't stay around. It's bad for us. So I guess having flying really helps to deal with these planeswalkers, at least at least in game one. Game two, we can give ourselves some other options. All right, another creature. Our opponent didn't really do anything, so that's good. I mean, I'm kind of expecting a removal spell here. Oh, they block, okay. Well, they don't have a removal spell. So we might be able to sneak right by here with a win if we're lucky. <laughs> we'll see. I'm expecting something, though, like a damnation or something to come out in a second. <laughs> Opponent's got something. Black, black. <laughs> That's not damnation. Oh, okay, it's all spell. Well, they can get rid of a bunch of our creatures, I guess. But they can't get rid of everything. And they can't get rid of the plating. So... This will also buff the plating. So do we just have lethal? Oh, what, four or five artifacts? Yeah, we should be fine. Just equip this. Yeah, our opponent gives up. Okay, that's fine. So we got through game one, but now we know we're facing a Nahiri control deck. <laughs> so what do we want? Um, I want the negates, I think. The spells would be okay, I mean, because of the removal spells. But if we put all four negates in, they work against those two. I don't want to water down my deck too much, because I do think we're going to need, at the same time, I could take out a Dispel to counter removal spell, or I could just keep an extra creature in the deck and I have that creature I draw instead. So I don't know. To me, it seems similar. I'm just going to go with the negates, I think, for right now, and then just try to trim maybe again some of the higher casting costs or higher affinity cards. Just to speed things up, I'll take out one of these, maybe. That way I'm not messing up our curve too badly. There's nothing there I want to take out. Let's take out one of these Tempered Steels. Still leaves us with three. Okay. I think that's good. We'll move on to game two. All right, so see how our opponent starts things off. I mean, this is a good hand, too. I'm happy keeping this. Uh, we need to draw into at least one more land. But I like the fact that we have blue mana to start and a set it all. I'm pretty cool with that. But I do want mana quickly. Like, if we don't draw into it within the next two turns, we could be in trouble. <laughs> So we're off to a good start, and we have a couple of platings. So I'm assuming our opponent's going to take out one of these creatures. I feel like Lightning Bolt or something's going to come our way sooner than later. Because their opponent's definitely experienced. I mean, they know that they need to keep... There it is, Lightning Bolt. <laughs> I mean, they know they need to keep our artifact count down as much as possible, or else this deck could go off, and they don't want that to happen. And again, they don't necessarily know we're playing a budget brew. I mean, they saw Tempered Steel, so maybe they do, but they have to be really careful about letting us just throw a bunch of cheap artifacts down. All right, I'm getting super aggressive here. <laughs> um, we don't have another land draw yet, so I'm just going to attack with this and kind of cross my fingers and hope 
Now, it's a control deck. They're going to have removal. I know this, but at least I was able to get our opponent down to 12, which means that if they use a removal spell here, they still have the... Oh, okay. Well, that's a good removal spell. <laughs> Liliana. That will get rid of our creature, no doubt. Yep, okay. And... That's okay, though. I would have preferred just a regular removal spell because now we're in an awkward spot that if we put a creature down, as long as Liliana has loyalty to do it, they can make a sacrifice. It. So we would have to stay ahead of that curve. Plus, when she's not making a sacrifice something, she's going to make us discard something. It's going to be really hard to dig out of this, <laughs> especially considering we missed our land drop now. So this is not good for us. Now, if that was just a regular removal spell and we drew a land and we could have got maybe the platings out and uh, some small creatures again, we actually probably would have been in a decent spot, assuming they didn't pull like a combo off in here or something like that. But at least we would have been competitive. Like right now, I don't think we can be competitive. <laughs> I'm just going to lose one of these platings, I guess. Opponent's definitely got a good deck. All right, I'm going for it. <laughs> oh, okay, a blessed alliance. Not so much. <laughs> the thing is, even if I got across with that damage, I mean, it would have been a nice swing and all, but then next turn, again, we would have had the issue where I would have had to sacrifice my creature and I'd have to come up with something else. Uh, Lingering Souls, that's pretty good. So potentially, they got two now. They can have four flyers if they want. That's going to be pretty devastating. Because what's tricky now is it's very hard. I mean, there's a few options, obviously. If I had the ability to get a lot of artifacts out, we could go ahead and get through with some protection from the various colors. But at the same time, <laughs> that's, that's obviously not going to happen. Not with two mana. And us discarding a card every turn. Well... Got in a gate, but I think it's just too little too late now. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. What can you do in a situation like this with two mana? I'm a little surprised we're doing as well as we've been doing with this deck, <laughs> quite honestly. And if we're going to lose games due to the fact that we have only two lands, well, that's actually not a bad way to lose, I guess. All right. I mean, we still have 16 life and they're at 8, but I don't even know what I could draw into that I could really do something fast enough, even if I drew some lands at this point. So I'm just going to play this out a little bit and see if they want to show us more of their deck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll negate that. <laughs> Although, I think I pretty much know what's going on here at this point. <laughs> Don't know if I need to see much more of their deck. Although, I'm curious to see what other foils they got. <laughs> they got some fancy foils. Alright. Must be playing something. I mean, they could always flash back Lingering Souls. And I would try to do that sooner than later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I figured there'd be some sideboard tech like that in there. Makes sense. I guess maybe they're just going to leave that back. Maybe they have a removal spell. I don't know. They, yeah, I don't know why they didn't flash back Lingering Souls. Not a whole lot. I 
that I can do at this point, I don't think. <laughs> Other than just let them play out some more cards, give us more information. They did show us the stony silence. I mean, they didn't have to do that. I definitely want to bring in those oblivion rings next game. Because they would have dealt with, not that we had the mana to cast them, but <laughs> they could have dealt with not only the stony silence, but Liliana. Another reason our opponent might not be playing the Lingering Souls is maybe they have a board sweep. So if they're not behind, why mess with it? And that way, if we were able to pull something out, they could Damnation or something and then still have a backup creature to play from their graveyard. Two creatures. That could be all it is. So... All right, maybe I should just concede. <laughs> Although I've come okay. <laughs> they have Emrakul there. Well, of course, with, with Nahiri, that would make sense. So they shuffled their library back into their, or the graveyard back in their library now, and we're down to four. Probably have some direct damage too, right? Maybe a lightning bolt, something... Lightning bolt, yeah, that will do it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> enough's enough. <laughs> All right, I probably should have conceded a while ago. All right, so we'll go to game three. Uh, like I said, I want to bring in the Oblivion Rings. I think that's key. Yeah, I don't really think, I don't know, I don't think Spreading Seas will help. Dispel, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to water down things too much, but... I mean, they would deal with some of the some of the instants, but I don't know. I, th I think just the Oblivion Rings. We have the Negates already. That way we can just get rid of two things. And we have one chance to pull this one out. All right, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and play. We'll be on the play. So if we can get an explosive draw, maybe we got a shot. I mean, unlike regular affinity, this deck can't just kind of go crazy right away with Archbound Ravagers and stuff. Well, I, I'm going to keep this, I think. It's a little mana heavy, but I like the fact that we have our colors. Now we just need to draw into things like the Negates and the, and the Oblivion Rings and... Uh, some threats. <laughs> we do have a cranial plating, though. I mean, more. Th this isn't bad. I don't mind keeping this hand. I'm just going to play some stuff out fast here, I think. And just try to set up, like, a quick cranial plating win. Well, our opponent doesn't have, like, lightning bolt turn one. That's nice. <laughs> or they don't have the red mana. One of the two. Attack in for one. get one of these platings out. Trying another platings is actually real good too because we can double up on these and again if our opponent just stumbles a little bit we could steal this one. And that yeah, it takes a little more to activate so that's good. And we have a flyer too so that is decent. Oh nice that's actually pretty good. <laughs> Need one more white mana to make it happen, but if we run into it, that's actually pretty explosive. I'm going to equip, and I'm just going to go ahead and play this other plating so that it adds to the 
damage a little bit. We'll attack. I mean, we could run into something. I'm just going to attack above so we don't get hit with, like, Blessed Alliance or something. All right. <laughs> okay, Anger of the Gods. Well, that resets things a little bit, but we're still okay. I do want to see another land at some point here, <laughs> but we're still okay. And this our opponent doesn't seem to have straight up artifact destruction that I've seen. I mean, they have ways to turn off our abilities and such, but they are, haven't really dealt with a cranial plating yet. They've dealt with creatures, so having the two platings to keep this in its protection phase is actually pretty good. Staying in metal, metalcraft here uh, could be pretty key. I'm going to put out something else just as an insurance policy. And also it helps these platings get a little additional action. And with two platings, it starts to add up real fast. <laughs> so now our opponent I'm, I might have something. I mean, I'm going into four open mana. <laughs> There's the fetch land. But I feel like it's kind of now or never. Like, I just have to do it. Yeah, that's what I was thought. Blessed Alliance. Okay. But it's still decent because our opponent can gain life too. Wow. That was a big turn. That was a huge swing. <laughs> Got rid of that creature and gained all that life. Okay. Sure. Um, We're not dead yet, though, because of the two platings. I mean, anything we draw just automatically becomes explosive. Timely reinforcements, what? Okay. <laughs> that ain't good for us. Because, <laughs> again, now we have that awkwardness that they can chump block three things unless we can get another flyer or something. Oh, and there you go. And, they, and for good measure, they got rid of our creature. Okay, well, we got that white mana. But now we got nothing to do. Although I blink moth Nexus, that's a thing. So what I can do, I'm going to activate the Nexus. I'm going to attack. It's only a few points of damage, but I'm just going to do it. At least it's a fire. And the next turn, assuming everything survives, including us, what I'll do is, <laughs> if I don't have a better play, I'll just activate the Nexus, put the two platings on it, attack. I mean, they'll fall off at the end of the turn, but that's fine because we're coming across with huge damage. All right, they're attacking for three. But no other play. Now, again, we could be running into a Blessed Alliance or something. So it kind of is what it is. I'm going to play this first to give some extra points of value to my platings. Activate... We don't have the luxury of waiting for them to tap out. We'll be dead. We just don't have... I mean, this is... Every matchup for us is all or nothing. <laughs> when we're playing with a deck like this. All right, nothing. Wow, all right. So it puts our opponent in a position where they kind of have to draw something now, or we just do that again and win. And we won. Wow, I can't believe they didn't have a removal spell for us so i think we got a little bit lucky there but overall i had a lot of fun with this budget affinity build and i hope you found this helpful i'm sure at some point i made some mistakes this first time i ever played this deck but uh, i actually would play it again it was pretty cool so until next time hey thanks for watching and have a great day Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.